Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm Chris. This is my air hockey tutorial series. I'm carrying on with the drag and drop section that we've been doing. Um, as we left off last time, we just basically got like the air hockey game working. Um, it's really crude, and there's lots of issues at the moment. Like you can get stuck, and when when the puck goes through the goal, it just pretty much goes off the screen, and then that's the end of the game. And we're stuck with two players that can't do anything. So. Basically, we're going to add to the playability and we're going to add some scores and stuff like that, that to the game to try and make it a bit more playable. Um, one issue that we had in the in the last game is once we, ha we had the puck and it basically got stuck underneath the paddle or the paddle got stuck on the puck. And a way to sort of fix that and make it a little bit more playable is if we go um, up to... Oh, too much for zoom. If we go to the puck itself and double click on it for the sprite, um, what we got here is the sprite itself, and we got the cent central axis um, point. Um, what we want to do is we want to go to this collision checking section, and we want to click on modify mask. If you do that, uh, what it does is it gives you a version of the the sprite that we've drawn, but with like a shaded square that goes over the top of it. And this is basically um, like collision checking, yeah. So. Um, at the moment, whenever we collide with this, imagine my mouse is um, basically, you know, another object coming in. Whenever we collide with it, like over this, uh, this sort of square, it counts as a collision. But as you can see, like where my mouse is currently situated, it's not actually, if I put it on the opposite side, it's a bit more obvious. Um, it's not actually touching the thing that we've drawn and it's it's not really calculating it properly. Um, so what... what um, what masks masks do allow us allow us to kind of speak. What masks allow us to do is uh, allows us to change the shape of the collision, uh, so it's something more uh, more more useful. So in some instances, rectangle is a really good collision mask for say platformer games. But for our bouncing ball game, we want to have something a little bit more um, user user friendly. Yeah. So you can have uh, precise if you want, which is basically a shaded version of the object that you've drawn, but this is problematic also because the shape that we've drawn is not exactly round and it's probably quite glitchy as well. Um, you could have diamonds, say if you were having like an isometric game and you wanted, instead of having square, you wanted to sort of move in a different, sort of two different axis. But the one that we want is ellipse and what it does is Game Maker draws an ellipse over it and it, it does, it's not a perfect circle but it's, it's kind of round over the top of what we've got. So click OK on that. And then you can tell that you've got a modified mask is because it says modified in the collision checking section. Okay. Um, what we want to do in as well is another thing is we want to add um, basically two different uh, players. Yeah. So at the moment we've only got the one player sprite. So what we're going to do is right click on that and do um, duplicate. And we're going to call this uh, SPR underscore pad 02. And... Rather than redraw a sprite, which, you know, it could take ages. Obviously, it won't take us ages, but uh, it's just like a little trick. If you go to Edit Sprite, and then instead of double-click on it and going to the editor, if you go to where it says Image and click on where it says Colorize, uh, you get this uh, Colorize um, thing, and it basically allows you to hue shift the sprite that you've got. So if I shift it to, I think I'm going to go to blue, so red versus blue seems like a good, a good way to do this. So blue, um, and then click OK. We've got a blue version of the exact sprite that we drew earlier. So click OK on that, and then um, OK again. All right, right. On our pad, our SPR, uh, uh, sorry, our SPR underscore pad. What we want to do is we want to rename this to SPR underscore pad 02. Oh, sorry, 01 even. I can't even speak. Um, and we want to modify the mask on this, so modify, uh, we want to change this to an ellipse again, so we've got a circle going over the top of it, and click OK, and then OK again, and then again on pad um, 02, we want to modify that one, and we want to change this one to an ellipse also. All right. Before we finish with the sprites, um, we just want to open up the puck. Oops, I clicked on something else. Maximize this window. Okay, let me try that again. All right, I want to go back to the puck. So open up the puck, 
And then on the pack itself, um, I want to hue shift this just so that it's a little bit easier to tell apart from the player, which is also blue. So go to image, uh, colorize, Let me zoom out a little bit because this is a bit unnerving. And again, okay. And I'm just going to hue shift this maybe so it's a completely different color to either of our two players. So it's a little bit easier to see that it's different. I don't know, maybe this yellowy thing's kind of fine. Okay, all right. We'll change all these in the future. I just want to make it so it's really easy to see on the screen. Okay, so on our pad O2 um, objects, we just want to make sure we update our sprite to the new sprite. So it's completely different. And then in our game, we should see that one is one is red, one is blue. Okay, and we're going to kind of carry on these colors. Okay, so the next sprite that we want to make, uh, just to make our game a bit more uh, playable, is we need to have some goal objects, which basically go into our goal mouths, and it allows us to uh, score goals, basically. Um, so do create sprite, and we want to keep it a 32 by 32, and we're going to call this SPR underscore goal, and I think it's goal 01, first of all. And edit sprite, new sprite, leave it at 32, open it up again. Sometimes I talk through this fast, so bear with me or just pause the video if you need extra time. And uh, our first player was red, so this one's going to be red. And we're going to fill it in with a solid fill tool and click on the little tick. And we're good with that. All right, so that's our goal 01. We're going to leave the origin at 00 because it makes it easier to place inside of our room. And click OK. And then we're going to right click on this and do duplicate so we can have a goal for a goal 02 and we'll just fix this accordingly so spr underscore goal 02 and do edit sprite I'm going to colorize this so it's blue so image colorize and change this to blue and before i click ok i just kind of want to tell you some of the, the you know the playability that you can get out of colorize so say you're playing a fighting game and, I don't know, someone's picked the character that they want and then player two also wants to pick the character, the same character. Um, in certain sprites, uh, what they do is they colorize the, the sort of player that you've picked. So imagine you've picked like uh, someone from Street Fighter and uh, player two wants to have the same character. Rather than have two exact identical sprites on the screen, um, some games apply like an overlay onto the second character just so you can tell the difference in the middle of a fight so you don't get confused. And you can kind of do the same sort of principle with colorize and it's quite useful. So I can click OK on that and tick. So we've got two goal objects. Okay, right. Uh, sorry, goals, goal sprites. So obviously the next step is to make the objects. So right click, create object, uh, obj underscore goal. 01 and then grab the appropriate sprite and then do the same for goal 02 so create object obj underscore goal 02 and then assign the appropriate sprite uh, just open up your room after that so we can put the right sprites into the right goal mouths okay so goal 01 uh, put over the goal mouth and then with the bottom right hand corner again drag down so it fills in that goal and then uh, go to uh, goal 02 and then put the appropriate one over that goal mouth and drag down okay and then that's both the goals filled in and tick once you've done that okay um, what we're going to do um, on our puck we're just going to add a little bit of playability to it just to make it you know kind of not really finish the game but kind of finish this part of the game segment Okay, before we test it. So on our puck, we want to have two collisions. So we're going to have a collision to our first goal, so goal 01. And then just so that we can sort of speed it up our testing, we're going to add basically a restart to the game. I mean, in future, we're going to change this to something else, so it's not, it's not permanent. So uh, with a collision with goal 01, when the puck hits goal 01, we're going to drag in, if you go to main 2 even, and go to the game section, and then drag this restart game into there. And, do, and then in order to speed it up, if we right click on the one that we just created, so OBJ, the collision for Golo 2, sorry, Golo 1, I'm getting, even I'm getting confused. Uh, change uh, collision and click on Golo 2, and because we've duplicated it, it's got the same properties in both. Okay. 
I think. No, I just changed it. Well done. Okay, uh, duplicate and goal O1. Yeah, we go. Both of them in there. Ah, oh, that could have been a catastrophe. Um, and let me zoom out. All right. Now I'm going to sort of play test it so you can check to see if it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, if we get any bugs, we can correct them. Okay, so the puck's going around and it's obviously still quite glitchy, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a later bit. All right, so I'll try and get it to go in the goal, which is probably not so easy. And I think we may want to speed it up a little bit. I think the game itself. Maybe I can knock it at my own goal. Oh, this is so long. I could literally be here forever. All right, let's just make it go in the goal because that's just going to save us some time. All right, this is something that you can do to. When you're, when you're testing a game, sometimes the way that the game is always laid out isn't necessarily the easiest way. So what I'm going to do is going to grab this goal object, which I've just messed up somehow. Uh, wonderful. Uh, wonderful, great. Okay, objects, let's go back to here. Grab a goal, and I'm just going to make it the entire length of this side, so, so it definitely goes in. So there's no way it's not going to go in, except if I do that. There we go. All right, and grab this one. I'm just gonna scale this one up. All right. So it's going to be near and impossible for it to not go in there. Okay. Um, we're obviously not at the testing stage of our game to actually make it super playable. So I'm just gonna let this hit there. All right, and it should go back into the goal. And what you'll notice is if I didn't actually hit it there, um, is that every time it creates it, it's going exactly the same path every time. So you know, this is wonderful, but it's probably not that fair. So we're just going to quickly update that. So what we want to do is open up the puck. And then inside the puck uh, create event, uh, we've got this start moving section. And first of all, I just want to speed this up because it's slow. And I want to click all of the individual directions. And this should sort of basically whenever it creates, we can pretty, pretty much test this straight away. Actually, I'm going to speed it up a lot because I really wanted to test it quickly. Let's just remember that I've speeded it up loads. Okay, so it comes out. All right, it's going that way first of all. Then it's going that way. All right, so you can tell that it's, it's definitely randomizing it a little bit. Um, it may have a freak occurrence of where it keeps going one way all of the time, but that's just odds, really. Okay, so it's going in and out, and obviously we're not tracking any score. Technically, it is kind of playable, but it's not perfect. Um, all right. The other thing that we can do, just while well, we can, um, if we go back to our objects for our wall, and what we've got here on the object for the wall is we've got visibility. And we can do this on most of our objects. We can basically make any object we want invisible. So what it allows us to do, if we untick visibility and click OK, and then we go back to our game, what we can see is inside of our game room, you can still see the wall. So when we're editing the game, we can we've got full visualization of you know what's going on, okay. Uh, but when we run the game, because we untick visible, visible, uh, what should happen is you can't see the walls anymore, and you can see the pucks just sort of bouncing around perfectly. Um, obviously, I've still got the goal objects on visible because basically I always just want to see where they are while I'm, while I'm testing. Um, but like in the future, you can turn them off so they're invisible. Okay, all right, next thing we want to do is, um, let me see what we can do. Um, all right, so resuming where I left off, sorry. Uh, what I want to do is, I'm probably going to end this lesson here. I'm just going to resize these goals down. And then um, in the next uh, lesson, I want to show you how to like actually make proper scores. Uh, just because I think it's probably going to drag over and I really don't want to make the video too long. Anyway, so I'm just going to scale these down and then put them into the right position. So, yeah, there we go. And then just make them invisible for now. So open up uh, goal 01, invisible, and then goal 02, make that invisible. And, yeah, that should do it, really. Let's just test that to make sure that we're not messing around with anything that we shouldn't be doing. Okay, so the game's pretty much playable. Might not go in the goal very often. Oops. 
which is kind of annoying really okay there's that glitch that we saw before where you can kind of like lock it on um it happens less with these collision masks but basically through trial and error and extra coding stuff uh we can fix it so it rarely ever happens if ever okay um all right so i want to end this tutorial at this section and then in the future well in the next lesson i want to add in all of the scoring and how, how we can calculate all that stuff okay um all right thank you